So, the other day, a lot of people uh, roasted Emma Watson because she showed up at some award show. And one of her fans took one of the most unflattering pictures I think I've ever seen of a person ever. I mean, she legitimately kind of looks ghoulish here. And a lot of people noticed that Emma Watson ain't really as attractive as she used to be since she hit the ripe old age of, uh, th didn't she just only recently hit 30? I, mean, I don't know, I don't keep up with these people. So anyway, so naturally what happened was, um, this, uh, this offended a couple of young ladies. For a good reason, actually. Which I will explain, because I actually think that it's an interesting phenomenon. So, I saw this one video by this lady named Brett Cooper, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I see people say Abigail Shapiro looks like Ben Shapiro, and then I just reply with, because she's his sister, so it would kind of make sense that they'd have similar phenotypes. But Brett Cooper legitimately looks like she is cloned from Ben Shapiro. And she happens to be really freaking cute. It's weird. Anyway, so let's just take it from the top because I got a couple of thoughts here. I saw that Emma Watson was trending on Twitter last night and it had to do with the BAFTAs. A fan posted this picture of her on the red carpet and it was a really sweet message and Twitter went wild. And people were honestly being awful to her because of her looks in this photo. And so the girl says, Emma Watson just said she wanted the same phone case as me. Oh my God. And people honed in on this picture on the right and they're just ripping into her. And like one person says like time flies. Emma Watson turns 46 today. Somebody else says Emma Watson 31 looking older than JK Rowling 56. <laughs> Not cool at all. Somebody else says feminism before and after. I don't agree with her politics. I like her as an actress. I love Harry Potter. But I mean, we can talk about the toxicity of, you know, of leftism and, and progressive feminism without ripping into a woman's physical appearance. It, it, sure, but she, she looked terrible. Honestly, she doesn't really look, I'm gonna be frank all the way there, but you know, me sitting in my armchair, trying to be a psychologist, you know, I'm just some nigga on the internet, so let's just be fair, I don't really know what's going on with Emma Watson, but she doesn't look very good, in general, I mean like in general, I mean just not that just not just that picture, but even other videos of her, she kind of does look a little like she's not eating enough, if I, if I could put it to you guys that way. So, the thing that I think is particularly interesting here is the fact that our friend Brett, despite the fact that she does not agree with Emma Watson's politics, does feel the need to come and defend Emma Watson because they do share one aspect. They're women. And honestly, during other parts of the night, she looked stunning, per usual. Like, she's gorgeous. We can't deny that. And it's like, it's bad lighting and an unflattering angle. We all have those photos. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're just a little too cute to to make that point, Brett, because if that if that's bad lighting in a bad photo, I don't know if I can handle good lighting in a good photo. I think I would have to I would have to pledge my sword and shield to your cause from this point forward cuz I don't know if I'm strong enough to resist that. I'm just I'm keeping a buck, man. I'm keeping a buck. My my inner my inner nice guy my knight inside of me that I tried to kill, he's, he's, he's hanging on my thread. So, and no, okay, but seriously, all right, uh, here's the thing. You know what? I'm gonna save it. Continue. We don't all look airbrushed and beautiful 24 seven, and it's unrealistic to think that we do. And so people need to calm down. Calm down, girls. This whole thing reminds me, there's this Drake song. Best I ever had, but I was having this sort of debate with my friend. Because there's a line in it. It says, sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. That's when you're the prettiest. I hope that you don't take it wrong. She was like, no, obviously not. Not when I'm the prettiest, whatever. But, it, but it's kind of a controversial line, I guess, between guys and girls. Not really. It's kind of more of a controversial line between, like, people that are hypercritical about them being attractive and focusing on it so much and, like, the rest of normal, polite society. Because... Particularly what Drake was saying is kind of something that like all young men say and that is when they really like a woman 
they're not really super concerned with her looking like a supermodel or looking really glammed up and beautiful all the time. They like the intimacy that comes with the comfort of a young lady just existing as a normal person. That's what Drake was saying. And that's something that most young men kind of understand instinctually because most young guys probably don't have the expectation that they'll date a supermodel. Because we put so much effort into how we look and how we present ourselves and we're so worried about it. And you know, I don't want a picture taken of me where I, I look bad and it's like, oh, my hair or whatever. But guys are like, no, it's, <laughs> it's fine. Like we like it when you look like that. Because it's almost like men like women. But it's just interesting when if a celebrity gets a, you know, a less than flattering picture taken of them, is there a double standard? Or is it because she was trying to look good and then got the unflattering photo? No, my friend, it's not a double standard. It's just a huge stark juxtaposition between the way Emma Watson used to look and the way she looks now. And considering the fact that she really did look like an old lady in that photo, it just was bizarre and funny to a lot of different people. That's kind of really all it was. Like, young men like the intimacy of being able to be comfortable with women. That's what the whole, you know, hair pulled up, sweatpants vibe Drake was referring to is alluding to. It's just the fact that young men like being intimate with women, which kind of sucks that I need to explain that now that I think about it. The whole Emma Watson thing is no double standard. It's not that young men are saying it's, it's, I don't even know what the, the double standard technically would exist here, but it's just, it was funny because she looked old when she's like 30. That's the joke. But considering the fact that um, women looking old is one of the strongest insecurities young ladies have, I can understand exactly where this is coming from. In fact, let's take a trip over to Lauren Chen's channel and see what she had to say about this stuff. The relevant part is that Emma Watson, who played Hermione Granger uh, in Harry Potter, she was actually in attendance. And you guys know how red carpets work, whether or not you actually follow celebrity news. If you're on social media and there's an award show, you're going to see photos of celebrities. And as many people started to notice, there was one specific photo of Emma Watson on the red carpet at this event which wasn't necessarily the most flattering shot of her. I mean, I am somebody who thinks that Emma Watson is a gorgeous girl, even though I don't agree with a lot of what she says in terms of her political activism. But even I have to admit that that's not the best she's looked on the red carpet. And I think that happens. That's not a big deal. No matter who you are, uh, you're not going to look like a supermodel in every single candid shot. Plus, there's also things like bad makeup, bad lighting, unflattering angles. But still, it seems like this photo particularly has kicked off this huge conversation online as to whether Emma Watson is still hot or not. Has she hit a wall? Is it feminism that's gotten to the root of her good looks and destroyed them? Now, just bear with me, my friends. There is absolutely a point to all of this. In fact, the reason why I wanted to include a little bit of this you know, preamble, I guess you could say, is because Lauren does go on to talk about some explanations as to probably why Emma Watson looked this bad. Perhaps it's veganism. Maybe it's her politics. Maybe it's when she goes into being uh, a feminist. Feminist, oftentimes an act of rebellion, don't really care too much about the way they look. Actually, it's not entirely true. There are some radical feminists that kind of spin off into trying to look like troglodytes, but for the most part, women still always maintain this critical, I guess you could say, interest in appearing attractive. And one of the most interesting elements I've always found about Lauren Chen is, despite the fact that she is an incredibly attractive person, it's never really too much of a highlight on her channel or on Instagram or anywhere. And you know, Lauren has always kind of struck me as an individual that kind of just so happens to be really pretty, not someone that really strives actively to be pretty. Now, of course, I could be entirely wrong because I don't know her, but that's just how she's always struck me whenever I visited her channel. I mean, shoot, when Lauren originally made her videos years ago, she didn't show her face at all. So being attractive was never a, a, a huge point of interest into her opinions or her politics, I would imagine. So what I think is interesting, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up is considering the fact that Lauren Chen is someone that doesn't hyper focus on her being attractive, still felt compelled to comment upon young ladies aging and being old and not being attractive. So there is a point to all of this. Don't worry, guys. I, I'm, 
there's a point, but let's just let's listen a little bit more. My videos are male, but I guess just from a female perspective, I do feel like it's worth pointing out that makeup can do a lot to affect the way you look, including how young or old you look. Like if you have dry skin, which I suspect that Emma Watson might, and you do not use the right product, your skin will turn into this hair desert, meaning that you, you will look older, any wrinkles or crinkles in your skin are gonna be exacerbated. And I feel like that's what happened here. And not only was there maybe bad makeup being done, but you combine that with the lighting and the camera angle, and it's just like a perfect storm for a bad photo of what is in actuality a beautiful woman. Now, what you've noticed is that our two ladies here, both Brett and Lauren, made the conscious choice to reiterate that Emma Watson is still beautiful. Now, here's the thing. Twice is a coincidence and well, well three times is a pattern. Now that I think about it, Lauren did bring up the fact that Lauren Southern also commentated on this thing. What's with these conservative women being called Lauren? Like, what is that? Is, it, is Lauren just like the conservative name or something? I don't know. So Lauren Southern also chimed in and Romeo Lineal is going to do us a favor and read her tweet so I don't have to. Conversations surrounding what exactly caused Emma Watson to look the way she did uh, was swirling online. Lauren Southern came out with these posts taking an even different approach. She wrote, pretending Emma Watson isn't hot is a right wing cope and I will take no part in it. You all are unbelievably cringe. Ooh. Oh, oh, Lauren Southern with the, ah, the hot take there. Oh, ah, okay, Lauren, just chill out for a moment, goodness. I dislike her politics. I'm not delusional though. And she followed up by saying, yes, I will die on this hill. Conservatives talk all day about how they want women to be mothers, to settle down, be more natural, etc. Then fuel this culture of making women fear aging more than anything to the point they pump their faces full of silicon and shudder at pregnancy. So I think what Lauren says is actually really interesting and I agree with a lot of it. Yeah, I bet you do. Because as a woman online, I do constantly see men saying, oh, you shouldn't wear makeup, makeup bad. Uh, thoughtery, etc., etc. I don't like makeup. It's rough and coarse and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Glam or engage in like the more girly, outwardly feminine aesthetic. But then at the same time, we often see those same men um, really ripping into women who do look more homely, I guess you could say, and really the main way that you would distinguish those two types of aesthetics that women can embrace is whether women are wearing makeup or not and things like that. So it does put women in a strange place. And this is something I've seen uh, girls who identify more with the trad life side of things struggle with. It's like, well, on the one hand, a woman who doesn't look like she puts effort into her appearance is called a feminism, undesirable, yada, yada, yada. But then if you go to glam or are perceived as putting too much effort into your looks, you're called a thought, an e-girl, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, there's lots of reasons for that. I mean, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, you're not gonna call it a goose. So here's the thing. There's two things that need to be commentated to him. Now, I absolutely did not make this video because I thought Brett Cooper was cute and I wanted to include her in a video response. It's not at all what motivated me. Okay, no, but seriously. There is something that I find particularly interesting about this type of stuff because I honestly feel like if you're gonna bind your life to a member of the opposite sex, it would behoove you to understand them to some degree. And while there's a great many things about women I just don't get, and I probably just never will, there is one thing I do understand. And that is young ladies have an abyss that is the depths of how insecure they are. And the reason why I needed to show you guys three, maybe two and a half, examples of women who honestly aren't individuals that particularly really hyper-focus on their attractiveness, still being offended and upset about this, is because Emma Watson's aging is probably one of the best examples of the terror and depths of fear young ladies feel, that's a little redundant, at the prospect of getting older and not being attractive anymore. And honestly, what happened with Emma Watson is, is probably a really good example of that. Especially for them, because you, what you guys gotta understand is that like women's relationship with aging is like Thor's relationship with Thanos, right? You know what I mean? It's like, dread it, Run from it, destiny comes all the same. 
And to a lot of these young women, when they see aging, you know what they see? They see a reality where eventually there will come a time where no one will give a fuck about them. And that terrifies them. <laughs> they see a time, they see a day, a day will come where everything that they've done will mean nothing because they're not pretty anymore. That's what they saw when they saw all of these men make fun of Emma Watson. Even the women that aren't hyper-focused on being attractive still feel that fear. That's why I wanted to show you guys this stuff. I told you there's a point. Don't, don't, you guys think I just wanna look at pretty women all the time. Okay, I do, but that's not why I made this video. I made this video because I wanted to show you guys something particularly fascinating about young ladies. And that, honestly, in the manosphere, we spend a lot of time talking about how terrible women are. I know I have, because a lot of them do suck. But at the same time, we also have to be fair to the fact that women are, well, people. And they are weak in a lot of areas. And this being one of them, mentally and emotionally, and a lot of young ladies are really, really weak and insecure. And there is a true terror that they feel when they invest so much in their physical beauty, when that's the only thing that really matters to them. Now, is this our fault as men? I don't really know. I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I don't know. Is it our fault as men for overvaluing beautiful women and simping over them? Maybe. Is it our fault as men for having a higher consideration for more attractive women than ugly women? Maybe. I mean, we can't pretend that the success of all three of these ladies ain't attributed to the fact that they are attractive young women. Lauren Chen, who again isn't hyper-focused on it, is greatly bolstered by the fact that she is attractive. Brett Cooper's channel is blowing up like wildfire. You think that it's not because she's young and attractive? And Lauren Southern certainly had a huge stand-up having a whole bunch of conservative simps all over her. I mean, I was there at the time of her popularity. I know, I'm not, I'm not kidding. There's a lot of Lauren Southern simps in the past, okay? There might still be some here and there, here or there. The point is, being attractive absolutely bolstered a lot of these women in a lot of different ways. And I'm sure they know it. In fact, one of the most common insecurities of attractive women is they're not oftentimes always sure if they can trust the people around them. They're not sure if the people around them really actually respect them as people and respect their opinions and their thoughts or only around them because it makes them look good. Or if people are, or particularly young men, are only around them so they can have sex with them. And I get it. And I, and I think that we all, as people, particularly young men in the manosphere as such, should be able to extend a good amount of empathy to the depths of insecurities that these young ladies are having. And understanding that women's relationship with father time is a battle that they're always going to lose. And I think young ladies know they are always going to get their asses kicked by father time. However, just because you might lose the battle against father time doesn't mean that you'll lose the war against them. Meaning that what should be important on these young ladies is not a hyper defense of how beautiful Emma Watson really is. What should be important is the fact that we shouldn't really care about the fact that Emma Watson is still beautiful. We should care about the person she really is. And despite her feminist nonsense, which I'm sure is nonsense, I have no reason to believe that Emma Watson is a crappy person. I mean, she might be, but I don't have any reason to believe that she is. And that character and virtue should always remain at the forefront to, of these young ladies. And because a lot of young ladies aren't affirmed based on their character and their virtue and just being good people, the only thing a lot of them have left is just the hollow shell of being attractive. And again, even women that do try to have virtue, again, let's say our friend Brett Cooper, Lauren Shen, and Lauren Southern, even they still feel that fear because what they saw was their future. That's what that was to them. What they just saw happen to Emma Watson, they know in the back of their minds, maybe in the forefront, that's gonna happen to them. And that's why they got really offended by it. And I can't blame them for that. I can't be upset with women. I can't even be upset with Emma Watson. I can't be upset with any woman being insecure when there's literally a huge example of what's gonna happen to them once they face that battle against the wall. And a lot of men, 
jeer and jive and, and are happy at the fact that women are eventually going to slam against the wall. Well, women don't really slam against the wall. What typically happens is they walk graciously up to it, place their hand against it, sigh defeatedly, turn back around, lean against it and say, all right, bring on the chumps. <laughs> That's kind of usually what happens. Women don't typically just rapidly, you know, become ugly just once they hit 30. It's not typically what goes on. But the reason why women are so focused on it is because they understand the power of it and they understand its fleeting nature and they're deathly afraid that nothing they do matters once they become ugly. And I get that. I think as men, we have to understand that element of young ladies. And I think as young ladies, particularly the responsibility of older young ladies, should explain to younger ones that if you live a life worth living, and you have families, and you have friends, and you have goals and people that you actually care about, then it really doesn't matter if you're one day you're not going to be attractive anymore. Because, I mean, once you have a husband, you don't really need to be attractive too much to other people anymore. You just kind of need to be attractive to him. And if he loves you, then he understands that eventually you're just not going to be pretty anymore. Well, if you have a family and you have people that care about you, you don't need to worry too much about being beautiful too much anymore. That should be the lesson that young ladies should be given by their grandmas and their mothers. But unfortunately, we have a generation of older women that are still fighting and competing with younger women. And so uh, they can't really impart that lesson when they're still trying to be beautiful themselves. And that, interestingly enough, would lead us to another interesting reality about these women. And that is the depths of their hypocrisy when it comes to how they treat ugly men. But we'll have to table that discussion for another time because that's quite the discussion we really need to have. So with that being said, I assume you guys got something out of today's video. I highly doubt that you that you will. But I mean, if you do, I mean, you know, go ahead and click the like button. Now shoot, go ahead and click that one. Pow, subscribe button. Comment the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.